So in this recipe, in this next recipe, we're going to be looking at uh, dal. So dal, spelled D-A-L, is basically an Indian lentil preparation. There are, um, I believe, over 400 different types of dals or lentils in the whole of the Indian subcontinent. Uh, each one is not separate from the other. Many of them are part of the same family and are just uh, uh, processed in different ways and to different levels. So the uh, the dal or the lentil that we're going to be dealing with today is called mung and it's spelt in two different ways sometimes with a double O M double O N G and sometimes with a U M U N G uh, sometimes pronounced mung bean or uh, in India it's called mung. So uh, this is the dal in or the lentil in its dry form and it's very easily available at uh, most mainstream stores these days, but certainly at uh, places like the DeKalb Farmers Market in Atlanta and any of your Indian stores or anywhere online, you would uh, easily be able to find this lentil. Uh, the reason I chose this lentil for, the, um, for this video is because it's one of the quickest cooking. Uh, in this recipe in particular, we're going to be using a pressure cooker. Uh, in this case, an electric pressure cooker. You can also use a stovetop pressure cooker uh, because uh, it just speeds the whole process up and it also helps the lentil to really cook down into a fine, soft, um, almost pureed consistency, which is how um, uh, this particular Indian dal is served. Uh, unlike uh, the way lentils are prepared in the West where they are kept um, more whole and a little bit more um, al dente. Uh, Indian lentils by and large are treated uh, more as uh, almost soup-like consistency unless they are the, the whole lentil, in which case they're part pureed and part uh, left whole. So uh, yellow mung, this is what it looks like uh, in its raw state. It's important for this recipe, particularly if you're going to be doing it on the stovetop, to soak the lentils beforehand. So that's what's been done here. And these have been soaking, ideally you want to soak it for about an hour. You can soak it for longer. Um, and you want to make sure that it's in a bowl that uh, takes the whole amount of lentils as, and leaves at least half the bowl empty. The reason for that is because they swell and grow in size. So you don't want to use uh, too small a bowl. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain out this uh, soaking water and bring it back to show you what it looks like after it's been soaked. So this is what the lentil looks like once it's been soaked for um, about an hour. As you can see, compared to the size of the original lentil, it's uh, doubled in volume and the whole, the whole amount uh, fluffs up and becomes uh, a good bit softer. When you're using a pressure cooker such as this one or even a stovetop pressure cooker, it's not absolutely essential to soak the lentils, uh, but it does help uh, in terms of the digestibility of the lentil as well. Uh, it does make it more easily digestible if you soak it and you uh, drain off the soaking water once during the uh, hour-long process. So at the 30 minute mark you drain it off, refresh the water and then continue soaking it for another half hour. And that, and that applies to uh, any, any lentil or bean. The, the, um, the more whole the bean, the less processed it is, the more phytic acid it's going to produce. So the more rumbly tumbly you'll get. Um, so you want to make sure that uh, with, with more whole unprocessed lentils you can even refresh the water every 15 minutes um, and that will also help uh, with the digestion. So uh, what we do is we're going to put it into the pot of the pressure cooker along with a couple of other ingredients. So if you were using a stove prop pressure cooker you would do the same thing, just put it into the pan along with these ingredients. The only thing that would differ is that if you are using the uh, old style pressure cooker which has a weight on top, then you would want to cook it for three whistles. Uh, since we're using an electric which goes on the basis of time, we're going to be cooking it for about 20 minutes after it comes up to pressure. Uh, on the stovetop, this would take 45 minutes to an hour. So as you can see, the, the pressure cooker certainly helps to speed things up. So we're going to add to that some ground turmeric, which gives this dal a lovely golden color. Some salt. 
this is two teaspoons a little bit sorry one teaspoon this is a little bit of sugar which helps to just balance the flavors uh, this is two teaspoons of lemon juice and either one large or two small dried bay leaves so that's gone into the pressure cooker pan we're going to give that a little mix so that the turmeric gets nicely spread through and then we add two and a half cups of regular tap water to that so this is one cup of lentils that has been soaked so it looks like a lot more than a cup because it's been uh, because it's been soaked but in its dry form it was one cup and two and a half times the water to the amount of lentils you've used is usually a good ratio for this preparation so you mix it together so it looks like that and then lid on make sure that the vent is closed and you set it for 20 minutes so this the the beauty of the electric pressure cooker is it brings it up to pressure cooks it and keeps it warm without any intervention from you so that's a it's a good gadget to have for Indian lentils so we're gonna heat up our little tarka pan so the fat that we're using is ghee put that into the pan Ghee is clarified butter, which is butter with the milk solids removed from it. So it's essentially vegan. Vegan form of butter. Has a wonderfully rich flavor and is used a great amount in Ayurvedic cooking, which is the Indian health food. So we melt that down and once again, the, the small size of the pan allows just this couple of tablespoons of ghee to create a nice depth so that the ingredients that you're going in with next will have will be completely immersed, which will get you a really good tempering. So just to go through what uh, else we're gonna be putting in here, we've got uh, some cumin seed, we've got some crushed garlic, four cloves of crushed garlic that's just been crushed in a, in a hand press. Uh, we've got two teaspoons of tomato paste. We've got um, half to one teaspoon of red chili powder. Again, optional depending on whether you want heat or not, but uh, quite honestly, this small amount will just help to give a little bit of color and won't really add too much spice to this quantity of dal, which is one cup. Uh, and here we've got some pre-fried onions, which you get at the Indian stores and the supermarkets as well, and some cilantro sprigs to sprinkle over the top. This is just for garnish. So we've got our melted ghee. And generally with temperings, you always go in with your whole spices first. So in this case, cumin is your whole spice. And that goes in. Let that sizzle a tiny bit. And then you put in your garlic, your tomato paste, and your chili powder. Keep the heat low, so you don't want the garlic to burn. If you do feel that anything is burning, just take it off the heat. Mix, mix, mix. Make sure that the tomato paste breaks down Mix as well with the garlic. Smush everything with the back of your spoon. So you can see how beautiful that looks. It smells wonderful too. Make sure it's all well mixed together. And then we're gonna put about three-fourths of this into the dal and reserve just a little bit to sprinkle over the top when we serve. So that just needs about a minute cooking away in there. So like I said, about 75% of it in here and a little bit reserved for garnish. So 
you can see that mixing through there. Adds beautiful color, streaks of spice into the dal. Just pull out any bay leaves. So you don't want to mix it in too thoroughly. You do like to have a few streaks showing in there. And then we go into our serving bowl. Oops. And we garnish with the remainder of our tarka. Some of our fried onions and the sprigs of cilantro and that's your tarka dal.